everyone and welcome to CSL Saturday between University of New Mexico and the Texas Tech. This is Division B teams. They were lower league teams. Not as skilled as players as most on those particular teams, but definitely going to be interesting matches nonetheless. We're going to start out with Tier versus um, Kernetho. But I think his name is Tom T in this. And then we have Kiaros, or Kiaros versus Take Down TT. And then we're going to have a 2v2 between Kim Jong Skill and Isger. Uh, Cosmic versus Hydro 33. And Vash versus Terosity. So let's go ahead and jump in to these games. And where do we have these games, actually? That would be pretty good. Where's Tears? Here we go. So we will have the first game on Akalon Waste. Uh, the player in the top left-hand corner, a Terran player, he's purple. His, uh, he is tier. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot the tier is always purple. And the bottom right-hand corner, we do have our green Terran player. His name is Tom T, and he represents Texas Tech. But I think his real name is Kernatho. Kernatho. Something of the sort, but never mind. I will refer to him as Tom T in this game. So we do have a TVT, and I think this was um, a game. They actually had to remake the game because the the map that they started on was an Akalon Waste, but it was kind of a troll Akalon Waste. The missile turrets would fire across the map, as well as the bunkers would fly. The bu whatever's in the bunkers, their concussive shells would fly across the map. It was uh, very cool. Some friendly banner from the two. Two Terrans. <laughs> TVT can be is, is absolutely my favorite matchup. Uh, I believe Terran is a race where you can the beginning is sort of like a song. You can do so many, you can play the part so many so many different ways with um, add-ons and going one 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 or um, just getting three racks or racks expand. But um, so tier is typical thing is like a rax expand or a one 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 timing, and that one 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 timing is either going to be with hellions or widow mines, some type of drop of sorts. He's very good at um, starting aggressive on starting aggressive early. Oh, talking about each other's stuff, and it's pretty cool. We are seeing a gas barracks opening from our Terran player, Tom T. Probably going to make a Reaper. Will we see the same from Tier? What's going to be the first thing out of here? No, he's going to go Marine first. No, just opting to get factory down as well. Just Tom T getting the factory first and not gonna get a defensive unit until a little bit later. Getting that second gas fairly early. Wonder what he's gonna be with this timing. Second Marine coming down. And Tyr lifting off to plant down a reactor core. Yes, it will be a CC expand from tier. Or a barracks expand from tier. Tech lag coming down and getting out a Marauder. I don't necessarily know what this is. And getting out a Hellion. Just opting to get a lot of gas right now is Tom T. We do have that factory coming down and that reactor core building on that barracks. Probably going to see a switcheroo right there, and he's also going to build the the starport. We do have the starport coming on to this tech lab, so we're looking like it's going to be a cloak banshee. We do have a tech lab coming on to this factory, maybe indicating, and then a reactor core. So it's it, it looks like it's going to be a war, uh, a cloak banshee opening into Tank Marine. Yes, we will be seeing a 1-1-1 one, one, one 
uh, ex uh, one, one, an expand 111 out of tier. Getting quite a few Marines. Having five right now. His six has finished training. And now he's swapping. So he's either making uh, a, a few Hellions or Widow Mines. We have Tom T. Posturing for an expand here, though he's got a lot of gas and no CC. Making tanks right now and that Cloak Banshee and researching Cloak. Two Hellions out right now. Another two in production. We do have a medevac on its way out. So we will see some type of drop play. We do have a... A scan can be down from tier revealing that we, it is a 1-1-1 one, 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 and do expect that uh, that Cloak Banshee, he has seen the upgrade go down right now. And let's see the workers. Worker count in tier's favor, 28 to 20. Four Hellions taking map control from tier. We have that medevac out right now and it's going to load up these marines. Or maybe just heal them and they'll chill out. But there's no bunker here. With no bunker in front, you can basically guarantee that there's going to be some type of aggression because he doesn't feel that he needs it because he because he's going to be aggressive. Um, this Hellion from Tom T should see that immediately and be able to take care of it or figure out exactly what he's going to have to do to stop that. We are seeing um, turrets coming down from Tyr in anticipation of this Cloak Banshee. So And they're already finished. The, they're, yeah, Tyr reacting to that scan very well. We are seeing a reactor core come down on, oh, Banshee was taken out by this Widow Mine. We do see one kill and it was revealed by this sensor tower. Viking out, thinks it's going to stop this drop, drops dropping down, taking out that Viking, or at least scaring it off enough and stopping the creation of these barracks right now. So, Tyr getting a, a great, oh, being able to take out a lot of these SCVs right now. Let's see what the kills are at. Six SCVs killed right now. Some bio on the top, kind of stopping the top bio. And you know, uh, Tyr's not looking at this right now, and that's fine. He took out the Viking. He's going to pretty much take out all of this, I think. Some Marines coming to back it up. Ten SCVs going down, 18 units total. Or 17 because he did kill that Hellene on the other side of the map. Tank and two Marines will be able to clean this up, but really, Tom T is kind of in a rough spot. What's his worker count? Oh my god, the worker count say it all. 40 in favor of tier 11 uh, for Tom T. Tom T's expand is down, but really he doesn't have the income to... to he does not have the income compared to tier. Tier is just killing it right now. I love his Sim City. this line of... Uh, Another his third CC going down, but his Sim City is just really pleasant to look at. I like his uniformity of it all. Uh, we <laughs> so Tyr is going Mech. He is he is a Mech Terran. He's always been a Mech Terran. He likes to take that Mech, you know what, and stick it you know where. Spending efficiently, and I mean just the 69 over 20 over 30 supply. It's it, Tyr's way in the lead right now. His natural is up, getting those gases. He will be able to have that mech army fairly quickly. Um, Tom T is sort of in a rough spot, not having... He needs to just make SCVs, make SCVs, make SCVs. If you have extra money, get that other CC so you can get the orbital, so you can try to get back in the game. Um, and I don't know if he's... What does he know about it? So he should know that he's going mech right now. Tom T did, did get up there and was able to see these factories, so he knows it's mech. So he needs to get air superiority or be able to... Um, with a mech player, their mobility is extremely limited. So if you, they have to, what you have to do is stop them from moving out, or be there when they move out, so they have to inch forward and then drop them, so that they can. So he, he has to turn around to go in his base, or he can just destroy his economy and then just basically suicide whatever he has against that um, out of position mech army, and win the game. It sounds a lot easier when I say it, but it's very hard. It's a lot of you have to have a lot of control and. I mean, Hellbats are such a great unit that's probably one of the hardest units to combat in the game. They're just so tanky, and especially against Bio, if they just run in and pff, all that splash damage, and it's just like bye-bye Marines. And being in this sort of position, not having enough workers, I mean, it's yeah, it's 21 to 50 right now. And um, 
Tyr is taking his third right now and will be able to... Yeah, he's pulling probes, he's pulling SCVs right now to uh, saturate it. Finally getting up those barracks, those, that production, getting some vital upgrades is Tom T. Getting that first tank. Gonna put down these rocks so we can take this convenient hidden third, or more defendable third. This is always the scariest thing. Whenever I'm playing against a mecking Terran, for whatever reason, there'll be a barracks floating around. I'll be like, oh, and, I, and if I didn't scout, I would have been like, oh, man, he's doing mech, and I'm not prepared. But, you know, all the great players just stay Ling, Bang Ling, Muta, but they have a certain timing in which they put on that that aggression to where the Terran player gets off, gets off, um, gets off their game for just a moment, and then... Hopefully the Ter the Zerg can snowball, but it doesn't matter. It's TVT. We do have two dropships coming from Tom T, and Tom T is taking a forward position on the map, moving up. Maybe you're gonna try to do a double prong attack, a drop in the back, and then hit the front. But I don't know. What does he know right now? He doesn't know much, but he knows there's a sensor tower there, so that's enough really to tell him. Oh, but gets hit by this widow mine in this convenient choke point. And Tears just looking for that third, making sure that it's not down. And here comes the drop. The drop from Tom T will... Where's it going? There it goes. It's going to go right around this... Uh, it should have just boosted past it. Oh, it loses that one medevac full of the units! It was a sad day and all of these blue flame hellions are just going to come up and just kind of clean that up. Tom T is probably in a precarious position. But then there is this... This contingent of tanks and marines right now, which will be pretty easy to clean up from tier. And um, here comes all the Hellions out. And is he going to pull back or is he going to take it? No, he doesn't care. He's so far ahead right now, it doesn't really matter. And he's definitely aware of that. Tom T in sort of a really bad position at the moment. His natural doesn't have gases and is kind of oversaturated. And his main is just undersaturated in general. Just really not having the momentum he needs to take out this mech army. And Tyr is going to uh, move forward. He's moving his Hellions up and his Hellbats and some Vikings. His tanks are chilling behind. Not sure why necessarily, but he's going to stake out the front uh, of his natural expansion. Tears. Uh, Tears staking out the front. Tom T's natural expansion. This, we're going to see the... The GG, the GG move right now, the what I like to call the, the mech penetration into Tom T. Tom T taking his third, which is probably a good idea because he will only be able to hit one area. Tier getting that scout off, only seeing two tanks and a bunch of bio. <laughs> We're just going to see a Siege of Doom and an A move of uh, Hellbats and Hellions. Oh, and this bio is just going to get annihilated right now. And we have, you know, three Vikings on the field that will keep those medevacs really out of the range site so that those tanks can get that extra that extra range. But no, just moving up, not carrying right now. Such a, a commanding lead. 117 supply to, to 50 supply. And we do have the GG from Tom T. Um, Tier effectively going very successful mech, getting a drop off that put a lot of damage on it, but I also believe that uh, Tom T just wasn't able to um, macro out of with the position he was in. In that position, when you lose that much stuff, and you see that guy going Terran, you really need to just hurry up and get your bases up, and get a, get a quick third or a quick third orbital to try to catch back up with the mulage. And this game is continuing for... Never mind, this is just kind of way over, so... Um, congratulations, University of New Mexico's players tier for taking that game one out of this these matches versus uh, Texas Tech Division B. So now we are moving to where is it? There we go. So uh, Kairos Kairos versus uh, Takedown DT TT. Uh, Kairos is the University of New Mexico player, and he is in that top right hand position. He is the purple Protoss. In the bottom left-hand position, we have the Red Terror, and his name is Takedown TT. Um, I'm not familiar with Takedown TT, and again, Texas Tech University, I'm not too familiar with, but UNM I'm affiliated, affiliated with. Uh, Kiaros, um, he has different styles of playing. Sometimes he follows a sort of two-base all-in or one-base pressure um, fairly well to a T, and will execute it very well. Um, he's not too good in the late game. 
uh, macroing and getting up a third and really choosing a kind of like ending tech. So we'll definitely see what he opts to do in general. In TVP, it, it necessarily just depends. Uh, it depends on the gas timing of the Protoss, what type of like maybe early cheese that he's able to do or early tech so, such as Stargate and um, DTs. Or will our Terran player decide to do something a little irregular, but it doesn't seem to be that way. He's um, getting his buildings around his command center. Again, great building placement because if you go against blink stalkers or some type of stalker harass with a mothership core, you're going to lose buildings and it's sort of super annoying because there's nothing a Terran can do about it. Barracks opening and he's now opening, now opting to get gas. We do have a first... No, we just have a gateway coming in. Gateway opening and single gas. So we will see just a cyber uh, gateway cyber opening from uh, Kairos. Kairos. Our purple Protoss. Probably see a Reaper. Will we see a Reaper? From Takedown? Starting to lose my coffee buzz. Sort of bad. I love that coffee buzz. Orbital and... No, just getting... Um, a core on this this barracks one gas cyber core gonna probably get a quick warp gate or an earliest warp gate possible no scouting from either players both players just confident in whatever it is they're doing another gateway and cyber core going down so I'm not opting to get an early expand but definitely going to maybe put on some pressure or just have uh, sort of defensive units in order to feel safe to expand. We do have takedown. Putting the CC on the low ground. Very ballsy, especially with not even scouting. Making two Reapers. We do have a two Reaper opening. Uh, I guess this is good, but it, it's sort of happening at a time where... Uh, you don't know if there are stalkers. I, he hasn't scouted, so this is sort of a... Again, this is Division B. So it's not going to be very um, super high level. Some stuff will be sort of irregular. But in that stealth, it might be brilliant in its own way. I always find that when you... You can lose just as easy to something that you don't understand. That is just... Certainly just doesn't work out. And now looking for those proxies. But really, this isn't the time. Like, this would be sort of too late at this point. I would say. Warp gate nearly finished. Looking like he's going to expand right now. Our purple Protoss from UNM. No, not opting to expand. Where did he just spend all his money on? Just getting a bunch of stalkers? And That's it. We do have the first Reaper going into the main of our UNM player kind of didn't see that much. Going to kill this this scouting probe. Do we have a second reaper coming up? Well, our purple protoss is ahead in supply, but our Terran player is oh, and that reaper will get away. Our Terran player is macroing up. Just two barracks and getting a plus one attack. Let's take down our red Terran player from Texas Tech. Oh! How many kills does he have? We have two kills on this Reaper right now. Definitely worth itself right now. Getting a lot of great scouting information. And we'll lose it right there. But did do its job and killed two probes paying for itself. I think the other, the other Reaper died. But yeah, his natural's up. Um, our protest player is floating a lot of money right now. I'm not sure what he's going to do. I mean, this is definitely just kind of a a one base one base play. I mean, he could put down his na his natural right now. It's, it'll be uncontested. We'll be able to get him into the later game if this doesn't work out. It doesn't look like it's going to work out. This is enough bio and a bunker to stop this. No force fields. 
one zealot, no forward pylon. And we have the engage moving up the ramp. Oh, really bad position. Moving, uh, uh, still bad position. Now one zealot up front's not going to make a difference. Oh gosh, so yeah, and pulling, clutch pull, takedown, pulling those SCVs to that bunker. And now we have uh, Karos taking that natural expansion and moving into getting a war prism out to do some harass. That's pretty awesome. Get a move probably into Colossus tech. Getting a, an immortal out. But let's see the worker count right now. Oh, that's not it. This is it. Ah, uh, it's not too far off. They're both kind of even. And now uh, Kairos is uh, spend his money. Kairos. Kairos. I'll just say Kairos because that's Kairos. And I've been saying it wrong the entire time. Kairos is War Prism coming down toward the main base of our front takedown from Texas Tech. Will this University of New Mexico Protoss be able to warp in some zealots and cause some, some crying games? Stim is just about to finish for our Terran player. His plus one armor is coming up right now. Scan coming down, revealing that um, Kairos' natural is kind of really delayed and isn't really up to par at the moment. We do have our Terran player moving ahead in supply. And this War Prism is just kind of chilling. Looks like we're going to have a bio a bio timing with with upgrades factory moving across the map to do some scouting first colossus is going to come out here in a few moments two immortals a handful of gateway units for kairos i really like where our terran player is right now from texas tech he is just doing a very standard macro opening with bio and gonna do a timing with his upgrades and I mean his combat shields and collective shells will be done he has a drop heading toward the main base of Kairos and Kairos is I think he forgot about his war prism really right now would be a great time to put some zealot harass that entire army would have to turn around which would be in the favor because I mean be in favor for Kairos because Kairos doesn't have his natural expansion up yet yeah, up yet and he doesn't really have observ well, he has a, a cannon here that we'll see it come in but I mean that's really gonna be too late his front he's gonna have to split up his army effectively he does have a good concave here but this drop is really what's gonna cripple him I believe afterburners coming in and we do have the engage at the, at the front but definitely pulling back but this this drop is doing fairly well right here, but no, Kairos not microing well enough. His front army just loses half of it, and now the rest of it is going to come in. They're going to be able to snipe that that Colossus, and yeah, this is basically won by our Terran right here from Texas Tech, University of New Mexico's Kairos not being well does clean up that drop, but the naturals flooded with bio with one medevac, and he won't be able to remacro to stop it. I'm going to go ahead and just stutter step and kill all these drones. And there is nothing, and then we have the GG from Kairos, and Takedown from a Texas Tech has taken this game, too, out of this best of... Well, it's going to be, like, sort of five matches, but... Maybe five matches, four or five matches, depending on the winner. If there isn't a winner declared by the fourth match, if it's even, and there needs to be an ace match, it will be uh, announced when it happens. But I, I, I have all the replays, and I don't think it gets to the ace match, unfortunately, but that's okay. And the next one will be a 2v2. Let me see. Yes, here we go. And here's the 2v2 between, uni oh, two bronze players, Kim Jong Skill and Eisger from University of New Mexico. And we have Cosmic, the red Protoss on Texas Tech, and the orange Terran. Hydro, who I think is their actual organizer. I've never seen Isager, um He's a random player in general from the University of New Mexico. Um, his play is not the usual meta, but definitely something that is unexpected and somewhat fun. And we do have the Blue Terran Kim Jong skill. Oh, we're seeing two SCVs pulled, so we're going to see two racks 
from Texas Tech, we're going to see cheese. It looks like two racks and um, cannon. Oh, <laughs> so they're going to go kill him first. Why is this here? So it looks like two gate or something and two, two racks. He's getting the scout off right now, and what's this? The Eisger is looks like he's either gonna go for a 14 pool or 14 hatch or 15 pool 50 or 15 hatch 15 pool. Um, barracks opening with early with very early gas from Kim Jong Skill. I don't think these two players have practiced before in 2v2, so yeah, we are seeing two gate proxy. And proxy barracks, which I think this is kind of a bad place for it because they have to walk around this certain S shape right here, or this kind of like C, when they could just put it in the third right here, like in the back here, and that it would not be seen. But I mean, if they've practiced this build, we'll see. We'll see if it if it works. In general, we did see a 14 gas, 14 pool from Isgar. Isgar, is that it? Isgar and Kim Jong skill. Getting a double gas really early, so just opting for really early gas. And gonna get that reactor core. But I don't think they know. They don't know. It's the three racks proxy, two gate proxy. This is kind of terrible. This is. Oh, and these overlords aren't moving. These overlords. This is bad. Overlords need to move around. They need to see this kind of thing. Oh, he's not even gonna see it. This is so sad in general. Chrono boosted zealots coming out. We will. This this is gonna overwhelm our two players. We do have a, f a quick factory coming up from King Jones Skill. So hopefully he is going for he, a, a reaper. I mean, um, a hellion opening. And Isgar is gonna be going speedlinger. No, he's going roaches. This is not good. In two v twos, uh, the meta is not to go roaches. Um, if, especially if you have a Terran player, you want to get that mass lings. Get all those lings. Oh God, they're working down this. This is, and I mean, Eisger should be seeing this right now. Eisger, no, I want to see Eisger's vision. Yeah, they do see this right now. What will they be able to do? Oh, and supply dropping right there is Kim Jong skill. Getting those Hellions out. Are those? Are those? And Kim Jong or Eisger? Oh, he has so much money right now. He has so much money and no and, and gas, but he's, he doesn't have speed. Oh, gosh, yeah, he's just caught way off guard at this point, but his build... Oh, no, here come the Hellions. Yeah, two Hellions. This is good. Two Hellions out is good enough. This is... I mean, all he has to do is micro them. Don't lose them. You do, uh, you just can't lose them, King Jones Skill. Um, Texas Tech doing this really aggressive, cheesy opening, and he needs the micro. But Roaches are out right now. For Isgar, he has a lot of money, and he is way supply blocked at this moment. I mean, here come four more Hellions, so they should be able to, and, and, oh no, but the Roaches need to be in front, and Zealous need to be in the front for all the range units, I mean, this is really, there's just too much stuff here from the Texas Tech. Isgar and Kim Jong Skill getting caught with their pants down, not scouting early, and not sending those Overlords out to see really anything that's going on in the main part of the minimap. Yeah, we will see the GG here, maybe. Uh, they're just going to pick off... Texas Tech is just going to pick off stuff from UNM. Good going, Texas Tech, for putting on that early pressure. But pulling back is Texas Tech. I mean, there's no real reason to. There's no units here. Only four roaches on very low health. Then Kim Jones still kind of poking around, but now they're coming back. Texas Tech is coming back to put in the coup de grace. But Kim Jones skill is... Uh, so supply blocked at the moment, and Eidsgar was too for a while, but Eidsgar's money is going sort of out of control. He should put down just a macro hatch immediately, just to get out Lings. And all the production facilities are basically gone from Kim Jong's skill, and Eidsgar doesn't really have enough to stop this. And dropping down two, two spines, it's not really going to do anything, especially against this much stuff, but... And a lot, no, oh, there's three, there's basically three larva injects here that weren't used from Isgar. But this is Division B, certain uh, players doing things that aren't necessarily the meta, not necessarily are the best players, but having fun doing it, and that's really the whole point of these matchups. But we did have the cheesiest cheese ever win against our... Oh, we do have... Uh... 
Is this really a GG? Yeah, it has to be. Sorry. Hydro apologizes for being cheesy as hell. Well, it's their own fault. I mean, as much as people would like to admit that, you know, cheese is terrible. Or, let's see, 665. Yeah, these are lower league players. All, all of them are lower league players. They all have an obscene amount of money right now. LOL, no problem, it was good. Didn't expect that rush. Yep. The proxies in general. I accidentally picked T in the lineup, so I had to rush. Oh, wow! Well, it got him the win. For sure. Alright, so this is good. Are we done? So, GG's. Quit replay. So, Texas Tech, 2-1 uh, right now against University of New Mexico. So, we will hit the next to last game, or it depends who wins this, actually. Watch solo. So, this is Vash versus Tetro City on Polar Night. A Silver Terran versus a Gold Protoss. And that Gold Protoss is the blue player in the bottom. Tetra City. And we have the Yellow Terran in the north position. His name is Vash. So Vash being a... Uh, both of these players being the Division, division B of both... Uh, Vash is with the University of New Mexico. And Texas Tech is the Protoss player Tetra City. Um... Again, lower league players. I alt tab for music. Whoa. No way. Just some friendly banter. Vash, super nice guy. Loves talking, loves hanging out. Love hanging out with the bro. And... Uh, well, with, this, with Vash I'm familiar with, his play is usually a sort of macro Terran, like letting to get that racks expand into two racks timing. So it just depends when it hits, actually. Um, sometimes his stuff is a bit delayed. So against Protoss, there's already Colossus out, or a significant amount of Colossus at the time in which he wants to be aggressive, and it's really like, kind of like too late of a timing. But both players just need to scout. That's the biggest thing in the lower leagues, just need to scout. And we are seeing that scout come off from Tetra City. And Vash is going for that right now. Probably going to see a Reaper opening from Vash right now. He's getting that gas at the effective time for that. Gateway opening and taking his guess right now is Tetra City from Texas Tech. And Vash needs to even this up right now if it wants to go to the ace match. We are seeing that probe, that pesky probe kind of hang out by the natural. Moving up in just to give another scout. Gonna see if there's another ga another gas, and see if he's just going to drop a quick factory, or maybe well, no, the factory would be a bit off. But and there we go. We have that first reaper on its way out. Cybercore down and double gas. The second gas is down from our protest friend. And Polar Knight's kind of a, um, uh, who, who let's see, it's favorite too. Um, probably Protoss, because these chokes are very, are very good for them. Like, if they have a high ground advantage and they have force fields, it's pretty deadly against a bio army. But, I mean, both of these people have sort of a free, free third. They have to work down rocks here and in this position. Uh, and it's mirrored on both sides to get a very quick and easy third. Or be able to take one of these other kind of third expansions and then kind of fortify the, the front line area and take this back base right here. We are seeing Warp Gate being researched. First Stalker is on its way out. I mean, this is five gas right now. Reaper is in. Going to see the gas. Going to see uh, both gases down. Going to see Warp Gate being researched. And Mothership Core is on its way out. Will be able to throw it away, but does get one kill before getting out. He's got to keep that alive. Don't lose that Reaper. Don't lose that Reaper. Oh, and loses the Reaper. Because this is sort of a crucial time. He doesn't have a tech out. He counted pylons. He sees that there's two. Where's the third? Or he, sees, he saw three pylons. He came in and saw three pylons, so he knows there's nothing in... There's nothing out and about on the map. 
We do see that natural coming down from uh, Vash, and he's putting down his 2-rex. Very standard timing, and just being on that one gas at the moment. But what will be to trust these tech choice? What will be his tech choice? But it looks like he's going to opt to get his natural expansion right now. So a gateway expand type play with gateway. But where's that gas going? Both players having a lot of gas right now. A lot of early gas. I mean, uh, Vash is going to put it into upgrades here in just a moment. But I don't know what... Another gateway from our Protoss friend. Again, both players having a lot of gas right now. But let's see what the gas goes into. Some stalkers coming up for some pressure. But getting stopped by that bunker. A second bunker coming down right now? I mean, he is expecting... He did see quite a bit of gas being taken and no expand and, and two gates. So he can't... He should naturally expect something to be happening at this point. Or maybe in a, uh, like 20 to 30 seconds. Both players not spending their gas... Uh, robo, robo facility coming down. And we do have a perfect scan coming out from Vash. Being able to see that he is going for Robotech. He does have uh, three gateways, and but I don't know if he sees that natural, does he? Yes, he does see the natural. He does have this SCV just chilling back there. Um, yeah, but he's waiting for sort of an all-in that's not coming, and there's just a lot of gas from both players right now not getting spent. Um, but I guess here comes upgrades. Where's the upgrades? 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 Where are these upgrades? Worker count fairly even in um, favor of our Protoss player at the moment. Got a lot of gas right here. Don't know where it's going. Okay, so our Protoss player is going for a double upgrade build, getting that Observer out first. Is he going for Colossus tech right now? He will be probably going for Colossus Tech once he observes that there's this bio push. But this bio push is coming out right now. He should be able to do maybe a little bit of damage, but he does have Warp Gate and he has enough supply freed up to really do something. And we do have that uh, support bait coming down for Colossus Tech. Okay, we we do have uh, Stim started as well as yeah, it looks like it's going to be tanks and medevacs. But this little bio push is going to come up, might do a little something. He doesn't have stim though. That's kind of like a bad. That's kind of bad. Need we need for this type of push. Stim needs to be finished. No, and his army is cut. Vash's army is cut in half with the engage. Um, just as they will be able to get this. Uh, picking off one pylon not necessarily worth it. Losing quite a bit of bio and just gonna not be able to uh, push any further into that. And Nexus Cannon going down, which sucks for most Terran players. In Wings of Liberty, it was just you know a, a very easy, very easy day pushing Bio straight into a natural expansion. But that Nexus Cannon really changes everything. In Heart of the Swarm, I can't wait to Legacy of the Void. I can't wait to say that um, Planetary Hatchery stops anything and people complain about it. That's what I really want. All the key upgrades um, coming down: uh, Combat Shields, Stim. Is Concussion Shells done? I should click on a Marauder. Not yet. However, all that's moving along quite quite awesome. And we have three more barracks coming down. Getting into some, uh, more bio play. Um, both people's money is getting kind of crazy at the moment. Uh, more SCVs need to be trained. Drop more mules. Okay, we are going to see a two base all in. We're seeing six gates, but probably a seventh and eighth gate coming up here in just a moment. And I'm um, going to make a push when um, his plus one attack and rain, uh, plus one attack plus one armor and is he getting the extent thermal lance no not yet but that first colossus is going to come out and it looks like that's going to be a two base timing a two base kind of all in timing though uh, maybe a little bit late there's a lot of money here scan going down in the main not going to see too much We'll see that Colossus and be scared and need to start Viking production basically immediately. 
Yeah, he's dropping down more starports. Another starport right now for Viking production. Bash just getting his bio together. Twilight cancel coming down from our Protoss friend. His upgrades are about to finish. Not sure if he's going to want to push out. Here comes uh, a dropship of... What's he going to do? Kill this Twilight cancel? Is he going to kill it? Nope. Getting out of there and losing the medevac full of stuff. Yeah, it's kind of just a late timing for uh, a drop. I mean, definitely you want to drop, but it's sort of late... To, to do that. Especially when you know that their army is just in their base. And this is a very mobile army. Third command center coming down. And that bio is coming out. Where are the upgrades? Are the upgrades coming out? Where are the upgrades? No, I don't see an NG bay. A double drop now going. Oh no, it's single drop. Oh yeah, there we go. Drop on opposite side. Or where are the drops going? So Vash is trying to keep that, trying to keep um, the Protoss player in his base. External Thrill Alliance is being researched. We have two. This is starting to become a very scary army for Vash. There's two Colossus here. His upgrades are definitely awesome. He has uh, his plus one done. Plus two, not so much. And here comes this. And we have to uh, have to give it to uh, Protoss player at Texas Tech, um, opting to make lots of Phoenix, uh, hallucinated Phoenix to scout our Terran player Vash from UNM. Vash, posturing forward with these two medevacs, going to drop some bio down. to see if he gets some work done. He's going to drop them there right by the um, the forges and the Twilight Cancel, which is researching Blink at the moment. And we do have a warp in, and this is going to be cleaned up quite successfully. Will he lose both medevacs? He will lose one and not the other. We do have this oh, this pesky little uh, observer right here that's checking out the bio forces of our Terran player. Um, again, this, this Protoss player is in a very good place right now. He's been unchallenged in the way that, he, in the manner that he's able to get this huge gateway army and these two Colossus. This is a scary army. The Viking count needs to be quite a bit more and uh, Terran moving out right now gonna move toward the main base of our uh, Protoss player Protoss putting down his third and we'll be able to protect it with this large large death ball 45 to 56 uh, workers in favor of our Terran player 82 uh, army or 94 army uh, in favor of our Protoss player, and that's pretty scary when a Protoss army is just the same amount as a Terran army. Oh, we had a drop over here that seems to have been cleaned up. And dropping here, destroy, killing a probe, and getting the cancel on that third base. Good going for Vash, stopping that third expansion from coming down, making sure that you punish, punish that which you cannot defend. And now dropping into the main base, going to try to take out this here pylon. These zealots over here will be able to thwart them away. Um, could have kited him, but it's okay. Just picking up and getting off. Not losing that pylon. But now, going to drop it off. Needs to kill that pylon. Wants it. And doesn't get it. Still doesn't get it. Does get it, and then gets out of there. Uh, large bio army. Uh, no upgrades just yet. Do we have double eBay's? Yes, double eBay's getting plus one done. And, uh, plus one finished, excuse me. And so going to get back on par with where our Protoss player is. And this is a very passive macro game at the moment. I have to put it to Vash, getting getting in those drops, getting in those drops, knowing that knowing that he has to do some kind of economic damage to try to slow down this Protoss. However, he has enough static D right now to stop just about anything. So he needs to just get Vikings, chill out, get ready for this Death Ball, which is actually moving out right now with its plus one Blink Stalkers and three Colossus. And Vash not having mask map control on these towers, uh, not knowing exactly when this army's moving. This army could be put into a concave right now, right here, knowing that it would happen. Third going down from our Protoss player, and Protoss is going ahead and moving in right now. We're gonna is posturing to move forward. We do have a bio army moving forward and going up going up onto the high ground. This is sort of a precarious position. Everything's clumped up at the moment. Uh, needs a needs kind of a better spread. Has quite a few. Oh, but now getting sort of a spread. 
and Vash knows exactly what he's dealing with right now and is moving into sort of a position to stop it. Don moving up that ramp is not a good idea for the Terran player. Going to get just hit and it's move commanding, not a moving, but getting really just separated with the army and being able to be picked off little by little. Vikings are getting picked off sort of in quick fashion, not being able to take out these um, Colossus fast enough for that bio to actually survive and do some work. The bio has been destroyed. There is a few Vikings left that might be able to know everything's moving back right now. Let's see what the unit count is right now. We have 15 Marauders, 13 Marines against 10. Uh, uh, just too much stuff right now. 23 Stalkers and a, a few Zelts that were just warped in that are moving up. Not sure. I'm not sure where Vasha's upgrades were at this at that particular moment when the engage happened. Hopefully his plus one was finished, but it, the trade was just in the Protoss' favor. And our blue Protoss player feeling he's has enough done. Is just moving back. Stop that third. His third is up, but his third hasn't been mining. Is there a bunch of extra probes? No. His pro count is actually very low, and his uh, main is nearly mined out. So this is a kind of a good position for our Terran player. He has not necessarily a lot of bank, but he... Oh, he had to pull those. Uh, so they're both sort of in a rough spot, but... Um, a rough spot economically, however. There's such a large army from our blue Protoss player. Trust, tr to trust the Tetra City. He does have 2-2. Two, two. Our Terran player only has 1-1, one, one, and this is basically the coup de grace right here. Vash will not be able to stop this large Protoss Iron from coming to his base, and we have the SCVs pulled. We will see the GG. Here in just a moment. And Vash GGs, and congratulations, Texas Tech on taking the Division B uh, team um, games against uh, University of New Mexico. It was a very great uh, series, and I can't wait to see more from...